Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. I am here today with another story time and I'm just going to put this out there. This is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to me in my life and every person I tell this story to questions how things like this manage to happen to me. So if you're interested in hearing about the actual most embarrassing moment of my life, then stay tuned for this video. So this video is about meeting the parents of my now ex-boyfriend, okay? And my ex-boyfriend and I had a little bit of a different situation. So he was studying here in the United States. Let's call him Peter, okay? Peter is studying here in the United States with an F1 visa and Peter is originally from Brazil, okay? So what that means is his parents and family all still live in Brazil and he's here studying. Now he wants to stay here after studying, but his family um, and currently is living in Brazil and will continue to live in Brazil. So what that means is... I didn't get to meet the parents until about a year or so into us dating because we had to wait for summer break so that we could fly there and I could go meet them. So he went back for summer break. I actually stayed here and I had a nursing internship, which I can do another video on more nursing things if anyone wants to hear about that. But I had to stay behind and I was going to meet up with him at the end of the summer. I would be flying there to finally meet his family. So keep in mind at this point, we've been dating for a year, you know, they've heard all about me and stuff, but they haven't actually met me. And also keep in mind that, like I said, they're from Brazil. So his mom only speaks Portuguese. She really does not speak English. And his dad and his brother can both speak pretty good English. And obviously Peter could speak English very well or else, you know, he wouldn't be here taking classes. So the story begins when I get to Brazil. I get off the plane and we go back to Peter's place. He takes me to his apartment and I didn't quite meet the family yet. They weren't home. So I showered, cleaned myself up a little bit. I wanted to make a good presentation on them because like I said, we'd been dating for a year and this is the first time they're getting to meet me. So I meet his parents that night and it's already a little bit late. I'm really tired from the plane. So we go to bed early, but the next day, Peter, his mother, and I were going to be driving uh, a couple hours out of where he lives in Brazil to get to the beach. So his aunt has a beach house there and we were going to go stay for a couple of days because they really wanted me to get to see, you know, the Brazilian beaches where he kind of like grew up hanging out, um, etc, etc. So the next morning we get up, I get packed. Peter and I have all of our stuff together and we put it in his mom's car and the three of us head out to the beach. So it's about two and a half hours from the major city that he lives in in Brazil. And we get to the beach and everything's great. We unload the car, we unpack, and at this point it's late. So we decided that we were going to go to this little pizza shop and get some pizza and then after that we were going to be headed back to the house to get some sleep so that we could go to the beach the next day. So this is where my mistake comes in and I didn't realize this until later. So this is also just a pro tip to anyone traveling. Okay, so I was warned about not drinking the water there, meaning tap water, not to eat, you know, produce washed in it, don't open your mouth in the shower, brush your teeth with bottled water, etc. But the mistake that I made is this night at dinner, I ordered a Coke to drink and they put ice cubes in it and I did not even think about the fact that there were ice cubes made from tap water in my drink, okay? So we eat our pizza, we head back to the little beach house and Peter and I go to sleep, his mom's sleeping upstairs and I wake up at like 1 a.m. and I felt horrible like absolutely horrible so I rushed to the bathroom and because I'm just so honest and really cute in my videos I'll be real I had really bad diarrhea okay like really bad to the point where I'm sweating I feel like I'm gonna throw up at the same time like I am not doing good 
So I'm in there for a little bit. I managed to kind of get myself, you know, like toweled off and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to go back to bed. You know, sometimes people just get sick. Maybe it's from traveling. You know, I've been through some stuff in the last couple days. That's probably what it is. Like I threw off my system. During the night, I ended up getting up 14 times to go to the bathroom, okay? And come bathroom trip number three, I realized that I am now shitting blood, okay? That's all that's coming out now. And me having graduated from nursing school, okay? I knew this was not a good sign. I was like, that is not good. I have never done that. This is not usual. And it happened numerous, numerous times. So fast forward to the next morning, I'm still in the same place. Like I'm incredibly sick. I'm in and out of the bathroom and I'm still having this blood. So Peter has to tell his mom about what's going on with me which is to this day, I'm like, wow, I met her the day before. I'm so embarrassed, like, but what are you gonna do, right? So, we never even got to go to the beach. We had to pack up all of our stuff quickly, and they were going to drive me into the nearest city where his cousin actually lived, okay? And his cousin was a physician, he was a doctor, and his wife, was an anesthesiologist. So they both worked at a hospital in this city. Now, my insurance, I didn't sign up to do any kind of travel thing, anything like that. So I didn't really have international coverage, which means anything that they would have done to me at the hospital or at a doctor's office would be paying like full price out of pocket for it. So they call his cousin and his cousin says, take her to our apartment and when we come back, I'm going to check her out and see if this is something she's really going to need to go to the hospital for or if this is something maybe we can fix. So, I am laying in the back seat of the car trying really hard not to be sick in Peter's mom's car and we are driving in to this city, okay? So, we get there and Peter's cousin's mom is there because she's actually babysitting. She babysits at their apartment their little son during the day. So this is my first time meeting her as well and she is the one that owns the beach house that we just came from. So I was going to have met her and now I get to meet her under these unfortunate circumstances. And keep in mind the rest of his extended family, they only speak Portuguese, okay? So they don't speak English either. So I'm watching them talk and she just comes up and gives me a huge hug and in English says, I'm so sorry. So she knew what was going on, right? They told her. What a nice way to beat the family. I know, it's so embarrassing. But anyway, they take me upstairs and they have me laying in his cousin's bed, okay? They were so hospitable to me. Bless these people, they were so kind to me. They literally have me laying in his bed and they have a bathroom in there so that if I need to, I can be going back and forth between the bathroom and no one has to like really see me. I'm not too embarrassed. They're trying to be like really nice to me and they're having me kind of just rest until his cousin gets back. So a couple hours pass and his cousin, who I'm now getting to meet, comes in and sees me laying in his bed just looking like a complete disgusting mess. Like, yes. So his cousin, uh, through Peter, is asking me questions and kind of trying to assess me. You know, he's um, pressing on my stomach, he's doing his normal like routine, uh, and he confirms what I thought must have been the case. I got dysentery while I was there, okay? That is why I was, for lack of better words and lack of being cute, shitting blood because your girl got dysentery and I realized it was from this ice. But at this point, I was so dehydrated. I could not eat. I could not drink. I could not stop going to the bathroom. So his cousin actually wrote me scripts and literally went and filled them for me. Like the nicest person ever. I cannot believe how kind they were to me, especially with just how embarrassing this was. Like, and then shortly later, after he gets back with his medications that he got me, his 
wife comes back and like I said she was an anesthesiologist so she had actually tagged out a bag of normal saline from surgery that day and brought it home with her so that she could give me an IV of fluids to rehydrate me bless her <laughs> so I'm sitting in the living room now meeting the family with an IV in my arm hooked up to this bag just hanging on the little coat hanger okay this is how I am now meeting his extended family and they're all just you know trying to be really nice and trying to be really sweet but for me I just felt so awkward and uncomfortable and felt so horrible that these people were taking care of me and just to re reiterate how kind they were they literally made a special dinner that night of like a really mild rice and noodle soup so that I could try to eat some of it okay like they all ate it too because they didn't want me to be alone in it they were so nice so then uh, after this happens we eat dinner and I'm starting to do a little bit better but I'm still not great so his aunt that I told you had the beach house and was babysitting over at this apartment uh, decides that Peter and I can go stay at her place for the night because she doesn't want me to feel awkward or have to be around a lot of people really and that Peter's mom and his aunt are going to go stay at a hotel. They literally gave me their apartment for the night and paid to stay at a hotel. Like when I say they were the kindest people I've ever met, like the kindest people ever, I have no idea how I got so lucky to deserve that. But we were at her apartment that night, you know, I was still a little bit sick, but luckily for me, I'm on the mend a little bit. So fast forward, the next day comes, and they decide they're going to take me to go see the number one gastro specialist in the city that we're in. And the only reason they got me in is because his cousin happened to be good friends with him. They had worked at the same facility. So they get me in to see him. And he orders a couple tests on me. He wants me to get um, an ultrasound in my stomach. He wants to get um, some stool cultures, stuff like that. Pretty usual for any gastro issues. So we go through and do all of that. And yes, confirmed, I had dysentery. So that was super fun. So I did manage to kind of kick the dysentery. I managed to get over it. They gave me some antibiotics. I got fluids and I was doing better. So the next day we returned back to Peter's like home city there and I'm back and the whole family now knows what happens, okay? Like his brother, his dad are there and they know what happens, okay? So they're kind of giggling, trying to play it off with me, you know, but being really nice about it and I am just feeling so awkward because, you know, who meets someone's family like that? But then, uh, keep in mind, I'm still there at this point for another, like, week and a half. And I'm supposed to be meeting a bunch of other family members through the time. When I tell you that every grandparent, cousin, aunt, uncle, everyone that I met knew what had happened to me. Every single one of them asked how I was doing. They were kind of laughing at how unfortunate that was. Like, they felt bad for me, but they definitely also thought that it was really funny, you know, that that's just kind of my luck. And it literally became a running joke through this whole trip that like, yes, hi, I'm the cute girl with dysentery. Thank you for welcoming me to your country. So I did manage to get past that. All of his family was so super nice to me. All of the extended family, his close family, everyone took such great care of me. They were so kind to me. I could never thank these people enough. But in all fairness, I think the most awkward way in the world to meet someone's family for the first time is to literally be in a foreign country shitting blood and having to tell people. <laughs> so that is the story of how I met my ex-boyfriend's parents and probably the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to me in my life. 
So if anyone else has any great stories about embarrassing things that have happened to you, I would love to hear about them. Please make me feel better because this is my life and unfortunately things like this just tend to happen to me. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this story time and I promise I will be making more soon. See ya.